Good evening, everyone. My name is Rick Hatcher. I'm President and CEO of Play Treasure Coast Sports Tourism Office, formerly the Treasure Coast Sports Commission. And I'd like to welcome everybody to the resuming the eighth edition of the high school scholar athletes that recognizes the top male and female scholar athlete in each public and private high school here on the Treasure Coast, as well as up in Joe County. Congratulations to you all. At this time, I will ask everybody to please stand as the colors are presented by the Treasure Coast High School Junior ROTC Program. Sponsors. 
Presenting sponsor tonight is Indian River State College. Video sponsor is Sunrise Theater. And Mr. Craig Drone, who's doing the video for us from the St. Lucie County Public Schools and WLX Horizons. All this information, thank you, Craig. All the photography that you see with Karina that's taking photos tonight will be available at the PlayTreasureCoastFlorida.com website, as well as give you a couple weeks uh, to work with Craig Drone to get this information in. Everything will be available for you. I would also like to recognize my many bosses that I have outside of my wife, my many bosses that I have with my board of directors for the Clay Coast Sports Tourism Office. If you would please rise and be recognized. Thank you for your support and time. And as far as uh, sports goes, I cannot do this without myself. So I'd like to also recognize our Vice President of Marketing and Business Development, who's also on the video board in the back. We do it all. We even pick up trash, drive golf carts, and volunteers. We've eaten the way fish before. And so, Mr. Uh, Ryan Strickland is in the back. Thank you, Ryan. And also our Director of Events, Mr. Kevin Strickland. Great. Both of these uh, fellows graduated uh, here in the Treasure Coast of John Carroll High School, so it's good to be able to have team members that understand the strength of what we do and the importance of it. Now, I would like to also now bring to the stage our chairwoman for Play Treasure Coast, Ms. Jill Hansen.
many people know how many hours an athletic director puts in in a day, in a week, in a year. It's a, it's a thankless job, and, and if you never hear about Greg E, he's doing a good job. Tonight we will recognize a male and a female student athlete from 17 schools in our area. These student athletes are being honored and recognized for their achievement in the classroom, their strong leadership skills for their teams, the strength of character in these young people, good sportsmanship, all the while serving as a role model for others on the playing field. I can tell you this. You learn a lot in the classroom, athletes, students, but you learn so much on the field that will help you through life and give you life lessons. Those achievements that you made, those goal setting skills that you learned, those time management skills that you learned, hold on to them for your next level of competition, for your next level of life because you're going to need those skills throughout life, and if you continue to do what you do, you will be successful in everything you do in life, and I congratulate you. And now I would like to introduce a colleague of mine, a friend of mine, and someone who uh, actually brought me to the Treasure Coast. He was an athletic director at Port St. Lucie High School for a number of years and um, truly is dedicated to the cause of athletes, to the cause of education, and the cause of bringing up good citizens. Mr. Danny Neinstein. First, I want to thank Dan Como for putting this all together. He kind of spearheaded of this. He deserves a big round of hand, round of applause. Again, Rick, Ryan, and Kevin, you guys are unbelievable the way you handle things, set things up, run around, and you're just fabulous. Our speaker tonight has one of the best baseball stories in the history of the game. Drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals out of Port St. Lucie High School in 1997, where he went 11 and 1 with a 0.47 ERA during his senior season, striking out 162 batters in 74 innings pitched, and was named the High School Baseball Player of the Year by USA Today. He won the Golden Spice Award from Major League Baseball Players Association and had nine no hitters. Richard was also a four-time member of the USA Junior Olympic team. Angelo made his debut in 1999 in Montreal against the Expos. He pitched his first full season in 2000 at the age of 20, posting an 11-7 record, a 3.5 ERA, 194 strikeouts, in 30 games. Angel threw a 94 to 97 mile an hour fastball, a heavy sinker, and a fall off the table curveball that was his main strikeout pitch. He struck out batters at a rate of 9.98 strikeouts per nine innings, second in the league that year, and allowed only 7.05 hits per nine innings. He came in second in the National League Rookie of the Year voting by the baseball writers. The people that knew what they were doing, the sporting news, did select him as the Rookie of the Year. After a successful 2000 regular season in which Rick posted a 3.50 ERA and set a Cardinals record for strikeouts to 194, the postseason took a turn for the worst. Rick experienced what is called the yips. When you go home, Google it. It's a condition that takes away control from a player with no known cause. Rick has to be sent to the minors 
to work out of his control. He had Tommy John surgery in 2003 and then battled his way back to the mound with the Cardinals in late 2004. In 2005, after realizing the mental strain to perform as a pitcher was too much, he switched positions and became an outfielder. Only 12 players in Major League history have debuted as a pitcher and then switched to be a position player. The last player to do it was 1947. Rick played all three outfield positions. He has suited up for the Cardinals, the Royals, the Braves, the Nationals, the Astros, and the Mets. Rick was known for his defense and had arguably the best arm in all of baseball. His highlights of throwing runners out is legendary. Again, go home and Google it. There are several YouTube videos of his greatest throws. Atlanta Braves manager Bobby Cox was quoted as saying he had the best arm he had ever seen in 50 years. Only two players in Major League Baseball history have pitched 20 innings and hit 25 home runs in a season and were the starting pitcher of a playoff game and homer in a playoff game. Any guesses? Rick Aguil and Babe Ruth. Rick has been inducted into the Florida Sports Hall of Fame, class of 2000. 22, the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame, and the Prince William Connors Hall of Fame. And what I hope is his most cherished honors is his number 24 being retired at Port St. Lucie High School and being the first athlete inducted into the school's Athletic Hall of Fame. Fox Sports recently did a documentary on Rick's story much of it filmed here in St. Lucie County. There is also a fabulous book called The Phenomenon, <coughs> written by Rick with Tim Brown. A couple of years ago, Rick came to visit me at school. Two of our teachers had shared with me during their time at Port St. Lucie High School that they were from St. Louis, and they went to Cardinals game with their family, and they all wore number 24, with the ankle on the back of the jersey. As always, Rick was gracious with his time. We went to visit our individual classrooms. When we entered our rooms, both nearly fainted and were speechless. In your remarks, maybe you can tell us what it feels like having your own baseball card or tens of thousands of people wear your jersey and cheer for you. In addition to helping Major League Baseball with anxiety and the yips, Rick works as a baseball analyst for Bally Sports Midwest. He is a St. Lucie County native and makes his home in Jupiter with his lovely wife, Lori, and also two sons. There's an old saying, it's important, it's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. One of the nicest and finest young persons I've ever been associated with in my 41 years in education. The pride of Port St. Lucie High School, Mr. Rick Angel. Notes down here. 
First, I want to say congratulations to you guys. Um, listen, to be a student and athlete, to be focused on your grades and be good at athletics, that's, that's really hard to do. I don't know how much time that takes. I've been there, trust me. So uh, congratulations to you. Pack yourself on your back. Um, congratulations to your families and your parents. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about my story, how I went to the Fs, um, you know, how I got there, how I overcame it, and uh, then I'll get on to where I think, you know, I think maybe I stumbled a little bit and I could have been better, and I think that you guys, um, you know, just little tidbits that maybe can smooth the pathway for you on the path and the journey you're about to take. So, so growing up here, um, like, like I said, I grew up right here locally. I was okay in Little League, pretty good. I mean, I'm all-star teams, but I certainly wasn't the best player. Um, but as I was small, as time went, I grew. Um, you know, once I got to high school, again, I was good, but I certainly wasn't the best. Um, once I grew, though, I went from the summer, my sophomore season, uh, I went from throwing 84 to 94. And that's when I understood that dream um, of going farther could be real. So, in high school, uh, Dan, you mentioned those numbers, you know, those, those were fun, that was fantastic, and you strike you guys out, there's no question. Um, once I got drafted, I uh, was supposed to go in the first round, got drafted high, though, everything went well, I was kind of baseball's poster boy, um, everything was going fantastic, that rookie season, which would have been 2000, I get to the big leagues, having a fantastic year, Tony La Russa chooses me to start game one of the playoffs. Now, I had a really good year. I had a better month that last month, which is September. I was the best pitcher in the, in the league that month. Um, get to that game. I ended up starting game one against the Braves, which is my national, you know, my, my childhood team, Bobby Cox, Greg Maddox, all those guys that I watched on TV. It's an unbelievable, you know, honor for me. So, uh, get out there. All of a sudden, we got a six-run lead against Greg Maddox. Now, that's kind of what hurt up in those days. So, to me, I keep thinking, all right, all I got to do is just throw a room game, no discussion. All of a sudden, I throw a pitch, doesn't sit right. Uh, went right by the catcher and the catcher. Catcher missed it, but it really wasn't about the pitch. Kind of right here. So, um, to me, I'm like, oh my God, I just threw a wild pitch. Uh, go back to the drawing board, all the keys that I have, you know, stay back, keep my weight back. Um, little things like that, nothing was working. All of a sudden, I spike a curveball, throw a ball, backstop. Now I'm throwing three balls off the backstop. Before I know it, walk base is loaded. They got three or four runs, catch it back up, and I'm out of the game. Now, nothing like that has ever happened to me. I was always. All right, so I was always able to just throw a baseball wherever I want. Somebody give it to me, hit that, I can hit it, no problem. Um, all of a sudden, lose it, right? And I remember thinking at the time, all right, it's mechanical. You know, I can fix this. Really, I had no idea what was going on. And I remember saying to the media after that game, like, like I said, it was mechanical, I'll fix it, uh, no problem. Well, everybody around me, I think, had a better idea than I did. Uh, and when you Google the display or whatever the heck, if you know what it means, uh, really you lose your ability, for me anyway, to throw strikes. Um, something I've always been able to do without any reason. I looked down, I couldn't feel the ball in my hand. Uh, really what it felt like was like I was having a miniature blackout or seizure right when I went to release the ball. It was almost like I'd black out and then I'd pray, hope that it went somewhere where it's supposed to. And at that time, I was hoping to catch it and even catch it. So imagine standing on the mountain in the playoffs with 50,000, the entire world watching. Uh, and for me, that was really my coming out party to all of a sudden now I can't even throw the ball to the catcher. So you want to talk about feeling lonely, uh, that's about the loneliest place on earth. Um, but... Uh, battled that for four years, up and down, trying to figure it out. Uh, got back, made it back to the big leagues, pitched for a month um, at the end of the season in 04. I came back in 05. Um, like Danny said, when I realized just mentally it wasn't, uh, it just wasn't something that I thought could last. Um, you know, what it took. I uh, decided to change to be an outfielder, made it back to the big leagues, played eight more years uh, in the outfield, mostly in center field, and um, I had a ride of my life. I mean, listen, if I wouldn't have had the courage to keep going, I would quit. I wouldn't be up here talking to you guys. And I think, you know, that's one of the lessons there, right? I think we're in such a results-orientated world these days, right? It's easy to get caught up in the wins and the losses. But guess what? You're going to have wins and you're going to have losses. To me, it's the courage and the effort to get out there and try. If you can focus on that process, the results are going to end up being there. 
you know, you know as, as a pitcher, pitcher as, as a, a as, as a hitter, hitter right? right? Your, your batting average is always going to go up and down. But if you keep try to keep it sim simple, and for a hitter consistently think, all right, I want to go make solid contact, right? And keep it simple. I'm making solid contact. The numbers will end up working out. You don't have to focus on the world of results. Uh, one thing my mentor um, taught me when we. Um, when I was going through the issues of the years and trying to figure it out, refine myself, you know, one thing that always helped me was, hey, you know what, no matter how bad it gets, the sun will always rise tomorrow. The other thing was, it's not what happens to you, but it's how you respond to it. So it wasn't the fact that I went through throwing balls, you know, off the backstop, couldn't throw strikes. Um, it was how I came back and kept fighting each time, each day. And without that courage to keep fighting, to keep going, I wouldn't be here speaking to you, and since we're here locally, um, this wouldn't have happened either. So last week, Danny told me I wrote a book it's called The Phenomenon of Grades, New York Times bestseller. Uh, there's been a Netflix, not Netflix, but there's been, uh, you know, little documentaries here and there. But last week, uh, I signed a deal uh, for a movie to be made about my life story, uh, which is amazing. I never thought that would Yeah, you know, back in those days, um, so in high school, I could hit. I was a good hitter, too, but I was blessed with God, you know, left arm from the heavens. You know, I could throw hard, I had an unbelievable curveball, so uh, it was very clear that my quickest route to the big leagues was pitching. Uh, and I loved to hit, but um, 
you know, you know in the, the minor, minor leagues, they, they do let pitchers hit once you get to double A, you're allowed to hit. So I did a couple homers and did okay. And then once I went through the throwing stuff, uh, the Cardinals were like, hey, why don't you? They sent me all the way back down to rookie ball, which I didn't even hit the first time. I skipped it. Um, but, but while I was down there, they're like, hey, you know, to, to maybe help you help mentally, why don't you DH, which is called designated hitter, why don't you hit it twice a week as a designated hitter just to kind of keep your mind off throwing stuff? I'm like, all right, perfect. Well, I break uh, and I think that kind of opened everyone's eyes, even mine, because I thought I could hit, and as a pitcher, if I have any pitchers, are there any pitchers here today? Uh, one, maybe, no? Well, you know, pitchers always like to brag they can hit, so I was one of those guys, but now I had to go out there and prove it. Uh, so even maybe I needed a little bit of proof to see me do it at that level consistently. I always knew I had power, but to be able to hit every day for an average was going to be different. So when I finally got to the point of I knew pitching wasn't going to work out, uh, I walked in, retired, quit, whatever you want to say. Uh, I knew it was for the betterment of my health, mental health, and everything around it. I went home. Uh, at that moment, I didn't know I was going to hit. And I'd say four or five hours go by. Scott Morris, who was my agent, I'm getting calls from everyone. Hey, you okay? Just want to check in, you know, let's get together or whatever. Um, Scott Morris like, hey, are you ready to go be an outfield? And I hadn't really even got to what I was going to do. I wasn't sure. So I, you know, kind of caught me off guard. I'm like, dude. Uh, you know, I was retired, right? Um, which took a lot for me. I didn't think I'd be able to even do that. But um, I hung the phone, started trying to visualize what I thought this was going to be like. Started walking around. Um, I found a bat in my car. And I picked up the bat and I'm visualizing this half bat, what I think this will take. And all of a sudden, this feeling came over me. And it, it felt like the baseball gods or someone. It just, I, my entire body got warm. I visualized myself hitting a home run back in the big leagues. Picked up the phone, call back, so I'm in. So that was that. Thank you. Anybody else? How can you explain what, what Shohei Otani did? Is it such, so unique? How long do you think he can keep that going? I think he'll keep it going for as long as anyone lets him. Um, you know, he, to me, he does have the ability to win the Cy Young at the time. He's that talented, because you're just starting to see the, the tip of the iceberg when it comes to pitching. Right, the hitting was already there. Uh, I think the timing of when he got here was, was the perfect timing, right? He's already done it at a high level in Japan. And that was right around the time where we were only let starters see the, the batting work twice. Right? So the five innings and talk about how we're going to use them from a health standpoint. Um, but I think it's the coolest thing ever. I, the, the, one of my pet peeves is my kids are 10 to 12. I have two little boys. And even at the league with those guys, you know, I hear kids say they're picture only. Um, you know, I feel like they should be out there playing the game. Enjoy it. It's supposed to be a game. And all you have to do is remember that. It's a game. Have fun with it. Have fun. Thank you, guys. It was an honor.
from Fort Pierce, Pierce Central High School. Athletic Director, Director former Jaguar, Pete Crespo, Principal, Edric Gardner. Our first recipient is Delaney Ballback. Fort Pierce Westwood, Westwood High School, Principal Dr. Dr. Megan Green, and Athletic Director James Gardner. Our first recipient, Anna Barnhart. From John Carroll High School, Athletic Director Mickey Green, Principal Corey Hurts, Caitlin Chrysanthemum. Caitlin was here earlier. She's involved in the flag football district, so she already got her nice award. And Aiden Singleton. Lincoln Park Academy, Principal Henry Santabria, and first year athletic director Vera Moore. Our first recipient is Jacqueline Dyer. And Kyle Bray.
Morningside Academy, Morningside Academy, Principal Stacy Frisbee, and Taylor Shoot. Our recipient is Hannah Andrews. Port St. Lucie High School, School Principal Nicole Fleece and Athletic Director Harold Barnwell. Our first recipient, Haley Bukhari. And Carlos Abreu. St. Lucie West Centennial High School Principal Andrea Popwell and Athletic Director Blake Combs. Kate Eschersam. Treasure Coast High School Principal Todd Smith and Athletic Director Jade Stewart. Sarah Reichardt. Nicholas Colbert. 
Mark County High School, School. Al Alfred Fabrizio, Principal Josh Moberg, Athletic, Athletic Director. Director. Julia Glasgow. From South Fork High School, Principal, Principal Tim, Tim Aiken, Athletic, Athletic Director Ed Geiger. <laughs> Molly O'Donnell. Richard Palusa. The Pine School has a school, Benny Caffrey, Athletic Director Jeffrey Shirk. <laughs> Brandon Troop. Dylan Markulis. Katie 
Mason Koschel. St. Edward's School, Principal, Principal Jack McMullen, and Athletic Director Greg Zugray. <laughs> Luna Rivera. Eli Barron. <laughs> Sebastian Shearer High School, School Principal Christopher, Christopher Cummings, and Athletic Director Terry Amy. Amati Johnson. Beach High School, Principal Sean O'Keefe, and Athletic Director Lenny Jankowski. Retired Dawson. Yes, dear, Bucky Rojas. Everything you do. You got a few weeks left in your high school career. 
you, your teammates, your classmates, encourage them to finish strong. It will take you through life. The Female Scholar Student Athlete of the Year for the Four County Area from Morningside Academy, Hannah Andrews. And the male Scholar Student Athlete of the Year from South Fork High School, Richie Pelosi. Thank you. 